Charlotte. How are you? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Today we will be covering only the learning outcome three part uh, AC 3.1 and 3.2. And then in the next class, uh, I mean, in the next class, we will end this course. So be able to make recommendations for the responsible business practice. So we have to make recommendations, given a feedback, your own opinion, and a joint opinion for the work, for the business practice, and how they are actually uh, going ahead in their motives and targets they have set in the market. Responsible business practices are crucial for ensuring ethical, sustainable, and socially responsible operations. And definitely, we are just going to be discussing few recommendations as well. The first one says, ethical sourcing and supply chain management. Now, these both things are different, but we will be doing it very briefly. Now, transparency and ethical standards throughout the supply chain from sourcing raw materials to delivering the final product. This is the whole uh, process through which we get the product as well. The ethical sourcing that is transparent without any fraud, um, uh, opaque, products we can receive from the suppliers and the things move smoothly onwards. Consider the partnerships with the suppliers who adhere to fair labor practices and environmentally sustainable methods. So what, what as a business we can do, we can opt for those suppliers who are already working on sustainability of this um, production, or you can see as an environment friendly tools, they're opting for it. Then environmental sustainability. Implement eco-friendly practices to reduce the environmental impact of your operations. This may involve using renewable energy sources like reducing waste, recycling materials, and adopting sustainable packaging solutions as well. Like we should offer solar panel systems rather than using the electricity from the water, from the coal, like that. CSR. Now, they, this is the initiative that contribute to the welfare of the society and the environment. This could include supporting the local communities, promoting employee volunteering programs, and investing in the social and environmental projects that align with their company's values. Now, CSR is, again, a whole topic and a subject and your whole course as well. Why we emphasize organization to offer the CSR so that they can uh, move towards sustainability and environmental friendly adoption methods in their projects, in their organization. Then diversity and inclusion. Now these are the recommendations basically which we are studying at the moment. Foster a diverse and inclusive work environment by promoting equality and promoting equal opportunities for the all employees regardless of their background. Now in many societies and in many culture and country, they depict the people from the culture, from their, even the, their size, their looks, their color, so even the race. So we should equally treat everybody. Right. Um, then we have ethical marketing and advertising. Uphold ethical standards in marketing and advertising by avoiding deceptive practices. That is, we should obviously go ahead for those practices which are renowned enough. Why to opt for those practices which are risky and which have some adherence to it? Now, ensuring the transparency in messaging and promoting the products and services truthfully and responsibly. So you should be way too opaque with your consumers, with your general public, and with the employees as well. Stakeholder engagement. Now, building strong relationships with the stakeholders, including the employees, customers. Now, in the stakeholders, we have two kinds of stakeholders. One is the internal stakeholders, and the other group is called the external one. Now, in this, we have the primary and secondary as well. But for meanwhile, uh, the internal one are the people or the stakeholders which are directly associated with the organization. And the external one are from the outside, like a government, the stake, the whole shareholders in the organization. They should also have a good impact on the organization in such a way that they can opt for the CSR practices. Compliance and governance. Maintain the strong governance practices and adhere to all relevant laws, regulations, and industry standards. Implement internal controls and compliance mechanisms to ensure accountability and prevent unethical behavior within the organization. So the compliance and governance department should be controlled by those person or those personnel who can actually govern each and every department very accurately and vigilantly. For example, there should be proper laws if any female or male or anybody faces a harassment case, there should be a committee held for it so that they can encounter what the problem was and how we can deal with it. 
then continuous improvement and innovation. Why we always encourage organization to fund their research and development or R&D department more because when we are going to make new innovative products in the market, introducing new and unique things, definitely we can grab the market uh, target customers as well as the market as well, the consumer market. Transparency and accountability. Now practice transparency and reporting your business activities, financial performance, sustainability initiatives. Now these are the few thoughts which we can share to home to the managers, to the senior managers and to the MD teams. And they can definitely opt for it. Like mostly the fraud which happened is in the upper level. So when the lower level people complains, even to the upper level, like the senior managers and MD, they always make them shut their mouth by giving them yeah. money. Like, or they just... Uh, what they do, they just frighten them that I'll be just um, making you fired out the job. So this is, again, uh, another aspect, which is practiced commonly in the organizations. Long-term thinking. Shift the focus from the short-term gains to the long-term sustainability and impact. Obviously, it will hinder the uh, short-term profitability. Obviously, we gain the more profit in short term, but when we offer the CSR operations and sustainability or environmentally friendly uh, practices and projects, the profit goes for the longer term. We won't get anything in a shorter period of time, and it is very difficult to make understand the stakeholders, the shareholders, the board of directors that this is essential for the organization, but we have to wait for a certain period of time. By incorporating these recommendations into your business practices, you can demonstrate a commitment to responsible and sustainable operations, contributing to a better future for the planet and society as a whole. So this was the conclusion. Moving towards the main topic, that is assessment criteria 3.1, and it says, review the CSR policy of a specific business. Now here, in your indicative content, they have already said us that we have to target a specific sector. And I have uh, added links as well, for example, to hospitality sector, I believe, to the service sector, and so on. Everything is mentioned in the indicative content. What review means? This means revisit and analyze in detail the positive and negative aspect. If we go through the command verb analyze itself, you must have seen in the command verb sheet that analyze means we are going to talk about the negative aspects, the problem solutions, advantages and how we can overpower it. So in the same way, we are going to review the um, CSR policy of a specific business. I have given some link. For example, this is the link which you have to read and you can write a summary so that you can understand the whole concept of the assessment criteria. Let me just open it. This is a review on the CSR, which constructs and theoretical debate in Pakistan. Now, when you're going to read this article, it is very small one. You would know that how the things actually work in the organizations related to the CSR. So this is an introduction for it. Yeah. Like it is not compulsory that you are about to just read each and everything. You can have just a little bit of an idea that how things work. Now, this is the critical discussion on the literature. You can skip this part. Theories, the legitimacy theory, the stakeholder theory, we have read these as well. So this is how things in actual industry market, these things are actually in practice. Only then we can adhere to the stake uh, to the corporate social responsibility on the Today's organization are implementing extensive corporate social responsibility programs with many companies dedicating the C-level executive roles and entire departments to the social and environmental initiatives. Now, these executives are commonly referred to as the chief officer of the corporate social responsibility or chief sustainability officer. Now, these are the specific designation of these people who adhere these uh, responsibilities. There are many types of corporate social responsibility and CSR might look different for each organization, but the end goal is always the same. That is, do well by doing good. When you're going to do well, definitely going to get and receive the good as well. Companies that embrace corporate social responsibility aim to maintain profitability while supporting a larger purpose. What do you think? Like, are they doing it just for the sake of... Um, promoting sustainability and benefiting the environment and the consumers? No. Indirectly, they are gaining more profit because they're playing with the minds of people. 
we as human general public we want to make our earth clean because we want to live for a longer period of time that is true we want our generation to live and cherish for a longer period of time so what they do is when they apply these strategies on us and in the organization in reality as well we obviously go to their organizations we buy and purchase more and more because we know they are going to get uh, more profit plus they are going to benefit indirectly to us but in right. reality, what happen is um they literally uh, spend very small portion on the csr they just want to grab the attention the market is once the market is in their hand they can do whatever they want that is why the people which are associating the csr policies in the organization they are quite rich uh yesterday there was an event uh, actually it's a secret event but um, um okay i can share it with you i'm a student Shell is going to change. You know the Shell company, the petroleum company. Mm -hmm. They are changing their name because definitely, uh, because of the market in the Pakistan at the moment, what is happening is they are not having enough sales, even in the world world. So what is happen? What's going to happen is they are going to change their name to a new name, which I cannot disclose at the moment. Uh, Rebranding. Yeah. They were having a meeting, a whole, their shareholders were there. Now you won't like literally believe they're applying also for CSR policies in their organization at the moment. But the people which were there, the shareholders, the stakeholders, they have worn literally uh, 24 lakhs of glasses each person. They're damn that rich. Their yeah. footwears were of an extra expense. Their yeah. bags were of an extra expense and there were dresses for another. So you can Imagine like a single person was moving there with the 50 lakh of in person assets. So I was like shocked. They didn't have money for the development of Pakistan, but they have money for themselves. And now you can even imagine that for how much portion they earned profit from the people, yeah. from the literally common people. If yeah. they can afford to wear 50 lakh each and everything in a, for a single day, like for two hours event, then what is going to be the expense of their, for a daily purpose, for daily life? So that's the thing, they play with our minds. And we idiots, we go ahead. <laughs> I was thinking this today, and like I discussed in this lecture as well, that uh, many of my students, they are quite um, aggressive in a sense. Whenever we talk about sustainability and sustainable goals, they get very furious. No, ma'am, it is not like this. It is not like this. We do this and that. I'm like, okay. For you, I have added a few examples. For example, Lego's commitment to sustainability. Now, sustainability itself is a part of CSR, right? So what Lego is doing, the World Wildlife and Climate Server Savers Partner, they're also inculcating this in their uh, organization. And by 2030, they say the toy maker plans to use environmentally friendly materials to produce all of its core products and packaging. And how are they going to do it? They're going to dump their dirty toys, their plastic used toys in the underdeveloped and the developing nations. And the developed one, which is so expensive, they are going to op like they are going to be operating this. So this is how they're going to do it. With the advantage, we are going to have the drawback as well. Okay, in the same way, I add an example for the Salesforce triple will philanthropic model, then Ben and Jerry social mission, Levis Strauss social impact. These are the organizations which are actually working on the CSR and they have opted these uh, policies and theories in their organization, in their projects. And lastly, the Starbucks. Now we will be reading it through the link. Because I told you, you know, in the indicative content, we are having sectors by thing. So we because I want that we should study the latest things, not to go for the bookish things. What actually is happening in the world, we should go for that. Okay. So the Starbucks CSR programs and initiatives are led by the Michael Kobori, Chief Sustainability Officer for the world's largest coffee house chain. And if you know the background of Starbucks, uh, he was the person, the Michael, he went to Italy because Italy is famous for the coffee. Their people, yeah. they love coffee and the coffee there is divine, no matter what. And what he did was he was so inspired that he opened these small chains of Starbucks 
everywhere. Like if you, maybe you have been to Dubai, there still has an old Starbucks. Still. One. Yeah. The, but in Italy? But Italy, in Italy, they he opened when he opened the whole franchise in the world. He went back to the Italy and the it's in Rome, I believe. In Milano? Yeah, in Milano. In Milano, the old one. Yeah. Uh, the it is the prettiest one, you know. He says by himself. Starbucks there, like literally you can see the coffee traveling from one department to another and your how your coffee is made. Like you can even search on the internet if you've been not to Italy. It is an amazing experience. You should definitely yeah. see the video. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've been there. Um, so you so definitely you have an idea that it is quite pretty. The unique experience that they have. Yeah. It's very different the apart from the, yeah. Yeah. the one which we are having in the Paris. And he claims by himself that the Starbucks in Italy is more prettier than that. CSR initiatives for the Starbucks covered the wide range of business aspects and employed relationships, such as supporting the local communities, educating and empowering the workers, gender equality and minorities, energy and water consumption waste consumption. Now, mm -hmm. a single organization, he is actually coping up all the sustainable goals, the 17 sustainable goals. How? Definitely, he's coping up all the market. He's literally buying each and everything and making people feel that we are working on it. But in reality, you can see by your own self, there is no gender equality in the Starbucks. Although mm -hmm. they are, they do hire the black people in few of their organizations, but they always make them pay them low for some reasons. Then CSR programs and initiative. Now this is a reality based thing. Starbucks promoting the local communities. Now because we are discussing it related to the sustainability goals, you can see first thing is the supporting the local communities. What he is doing for that aspect to the. Um, CSR in relation with the CSR policies, then educating and empowering workers, what he is doing for that, then gender equality, then energy consumption, water consumption, waste reduction, and what, what he is doing for that. During the past five years, the Starbucks Japan has turned tons of spent coffee grounds into compost and feed for the cows. This is what they are doing at the moment as well. The global coffee mm -hmm. house she names to reduce the waste it sends to land to fill by 50% by 2030. This is they are aiming for it. Because obviously, when you're producing coffee, you're making coffee, it's manufacturing. We do get a waste for it as well. And we can definitely decompose it and we can get better quality feel next. And if we talk about energy consumption, the greener store format in North America consumes 30% less energy compared to the traditional stores. So it is a USP for the Starbucks. Other than rest of the store, only the store in the North America, he has been able to that a company that outlet is only using 30% less energy. Then 60, 60 per then sustainability sources, again, they are doing what they're doing for that. The company has 10 farmer support centers in Latin America, Asia, and Africa. The starter purchases of the coffee from the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo helped more than 4,500 smallholder farmers to more than triple their income. So this is how things goes on, and they are implementing the CSR policies in reality as well. So would you be able to do that in your assignment as well? Not to worry, we are only we have to rephrase things. Then for yes. the hospitality sector, I chose for the hospitality sector again, uh, it's an article written and how they have inculcating inculcated the CSR policies in their franchise. You can even read this as well. This is again very important and interesting as well. And these are the little uh, you can say helping the reference to you people so that in the end you can do the assignment correctly. But the main crux is whether you have understand the main assessment criteria or not. Like the topic is clear to you? Let's make it easier. Okay, lastly, we have 3.2, which says assess the extent of volunteerism in the CSR policy. Now, what is actually a volunteerism? This is the context of the CSR refers to the voluntary actions or the initiatives that companies undertake beyond their legal obligations or regulatory requirements. 
Now, what it involves, it involves taking the proactive measure to address the social, environmental, and ethical issues often driven by the company's sense of responsibility and commitment to making a positive impact on society and the environment. That's what volunteerism is. We do it for the well-being of ourselves and for the society. That is what we do in the NGOs. Now, there are a few points through which we can assess the whole uh, assessment criteria. The first point is response to the pressure drops. Assess how the company's CSR policy is influenced by the demands and expectations of the various stakeholders, including the customers, communities, NGOs, and advocacy organizations. Obviously, we can only influence or put these CSR policies when we understand the demands of these people, that what they are actually demanding from us. Evaluate whether the company proactively engages with these groups to test the concerns and incorporate their feedback into the CSR initiative. Same way, Starbucks has not been built by its own self. They have taken their views, recommendations of various people, the stakeholder groups. Only then he is able to do uh, the different um, sustainability goals in various sectors, like in North America, 30% less energy is being used. Why? Because their management, they are working specifically on the energy reduction, sustainability goal. That's the only reason. And they are applying the CSR policy in such a way that they're able to achieve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in evaluating the extent of volunteerism in a company's CSR policy, it is essential to consider following factors. The first one is the company's commitment to the social responsibility beyond the legal compliance and regulatory requirements, the integration of the CSR initiatives into the company's core business strategy and operations. Obviously, when you're gonna make it enter and penetrate into each and every department sector of the organization only, then we can go ahead. We can prosper it into the whole organization. Then the allocation of the resources, both financial and human, to support and implement voluntary CSR practices as well. And the engagement and involvement of the employees, management, stakeholders, and the development and execution of the CSR initiatives. Now, as a whole, or like if we talk about one person cannot apply all the strategies and policies in the organization. We have to yeah. take recommendation and support from all of the people, right? Like yeah. I cannot... Um, change my home environment, like one where I reside, until and unless my whole siblings and family members put support in it. Only then we can pursue further. Yes. Like at the moment, if you know, we are having um, a, a kind of a war between Israel and Gaza. Yeah. We can only support them by how? By praying and secondly, by just by quoting the products of Israel. That's what at least we can do. Because we all know that in the end, um, the karma has to happen. The jal has to come. Yeah. To come. We have we know these things. But what yeah. we can do as a human, as a community, that we can pre and buy quote their products. Because I was shocked in my home, 95% of the products are from Israel, like Israeli brands. I was shocked that... Who else was checking that one? Ah, yes. <laughs> Oh, talking about it, huh? well, oh my God. <laughs> like even when you go to the shopping malls to the any I'm shocked we don't have yeah. products there but we have products which are uh, supported by the Israel hmm. so this is true we are so much controlled by those people right the only thing we can do is just pray yeah that's it and lastly, by thoroughly examining these factors, one can assess the extent to which a company's CSR policy reflects genuine volunteerism and its effectiveness in making a positive impact on society and the environment. This assessment can help identify areas for improvement and provide insights into the company's commitment to responsible business practices. That's it. Uh, was the lecture helpful and you understood each and everything? Huh? Yeah, the, the link of it, it's much more. I didn't know that there was a CHR Starbucks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Good night. Allah Hafiz. Yeah. Thank you for the time. Bye-bye.